pretty much wherever you are, there's some some reminder that you're in the greatest city on earth, in the Empire State Building. Kebab Picasso, my band actually played here, I want to say eight or nine years ago. Cool little venue. It's owned by Jesse Mallon and Partners. They also own Niagara over there on Avenue A and the adjacent cabin down below, which is the speakeasy that my friend Adam and I talked our way into one time when we were in a pizza shop and we saw Kings and Leon go downstairs. We asked if we could go too. We went, it was super awkward. Anyways, Jesse Mallon, who's kind of like a punk rocker guy from Long Island, he used to own Lit Lounge. But Niagara, which had tons of lore and stories behind it. And also the Bowery Electric, which is right back here. Bowery Electric is probably, the room we were in, probably a 30 person cap. The room downstairs, I think is bigger. Yeah, so we're down on Bowery, which eventually turns into 3rd and 4th Ave. 4th Ave is kind of like this elusive portion that only goes up to Union Square, then ends. It's changed a lot down here. Where CBGB was, which is just a block away, where it originally was, is now at John Varvato's. The Village Voice, I'm not even sure it exists in any form. They might exist online only. Their headquarters were down here. B-Bar, or Bowery Bar. That building got sold. They have some lights on over there, but I'm actually not even sure that it is operational anymore. It's nice down here now. This used to actually be Skid Row in old New York when the Talking Heads and Blondie were playing at CBGB, which is, you know, a block away. It was not a chic area to be. It was really where the punks and low lives and drunks and drug abusers were hanging out. But now it's kind of a Tony Ritzy area. I don't even want to know what rents are over here. I guarantee they're over 4,000 a month for a one bedroom.
I haven't seen a lot of people play Bowery Electric. I've only been there, I think, two or three times ever. We, Goodbye Picasso, played there, I want to say 2011 or 2012. But we played in the dead of winter. It was a Wednesday night. It was a fun little show. It was during the time we were playing so many shows that it was kind of impossible to like get all of our friends to really make the effort midweek since we were probably playing that Friday or the Friday after. That's the thing about these shows in New York. It's cool, actually, if you're only playing every couple months, every three months, because then your shows are special. You can have your friends come out. Your friends will come out because it's been a while since they've seen you. But when you're playing every week, it gets to be a little tedious and it's more of just a stop before you go out on like a night of drinking. So when you're in your mid to late 20s, it's pretty easy to be like, hey, everybody come meet us at X where we're playing and we'll start there and then go out afterwards because if you're done by 11, you still have five hours of the night to go hang out. But once it gets older, when you have friends that have babies, people are married or people live a little bit farther out, they don't want to go out at all. And if they do, it's that one Friday, every three months they're willing to go see you, but it's not like an every week kind of thing. So playing midweek on like a Wednesday or something is tough. Thursday is still a pretty good going out night in New York for most ages, for people that are going out after work or going out to get the weekend started early. So I took out a little earlier than the youngins, and I went to one of my favorite New York institutions, Katz's Deli. Katz is crazy. If you come here during normal hours, it's usually packed with tourists. There's usually crazy lines to wait for everything. So I like coming in these hours when I know nobody else is gonna be here cramming up the place.